Hey guys, today I have a decent sized book haul to show you. I've been collecting books, I've done a few different thrift runs. I think I've had two book outlet hauls orders come in. Tolkien is resting right there. He was at the vet this morning and he's just conked out pretty much. So I've actually organized these books by genre or technically I haven't really, but I'm going to. I'm going to categorize this by genre. So I'll have it in the timestamps if you're only interested in certain ones or not interested in others. There's a variety here for sure. And some of these are gonna be hard to categorize, but I'll do my best. Because it's been a while since I've done a book haul, I think I'm probably missing a few books. They've probably gravitated to certain other areas of my house. And maybe I will reshare one that I've shared before. I'm not really sure. I try to keep it organized, but myself and other people are constantly grabbing books from a pile. So sometimes they tend to migrate. So my biggest section apparently is the classic books. So that's the one I'm gonna start with. This is a variety of classics. There's some fiction, some nonfiction, all sorts of things. So the first one here I have is what Katie did next. So a few months ago, I think sometime in the summer, I read the first book in the series. It's what Katie did. These are by Susan Coolidge and they are Victorian children's classics. So I'm going to be using this for one of my children's stories for my DIY literature curriculum since I'm going to be studying the Victorian era. So I've got a lot of my books in random bookshelves here for that. So this one's going to join my kid classics. I haven't even read anything about the back. I really did enjoy book one, so I'm curious to see where it goes from there. In book one, we start with Katie when she's 12 very obnoxious and then we follow her as she goes through a bit of a struggle and I can't remember how old she is at the end but she matures a lot and she's much um, a much easier character to read by the end and it looks like she goes to London I didn't even notice that oh I'm so down for this so looking forward to that one of the tips that I gave in the DIY literature curriculum or degree video was to read abridged versions of books. And so I've been doing that, like acquiring some for myself, for my kids, for our homeschool. And these I think are for me, but we might do them in our homeschool at some point too. I won't be doing these right away, but I got Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Also these covers are really cool. They make it seem so understandable and not overwhelming at all. And honestly, I don't know anything about these books, but I'm just scared of them but I'm definitely less scared with these covers and knowing that they are abridged or these ones are retooled, not abridged, but you get the idea. So at some point I will read these when I'm studying older literature. Then I got three C.S. Lewis because he, oh, this lighting. Of course the sun never knows what it wants to do when I'm filming. So C.S. Lewis is the author I'm gonna be deep diving on and reading a bunch of his stuff. I have um, I have a lot of his books already. I acquired more. I have more on my book wish list. It's just how it goes. But I got on stories and other essays on literature. I've got of other worlds. These are essays and stories. And I got the weight of glory. I don't know anything about this, but this one is not in my bind up of C.S. Lewis books. So grab that. He does have some other ones. I don't know if they are on book outlet or not. Um, but I've put them on my Amazon wish list. They are like um, narrative poems and some poetry books or books about poetry as well. The next couple I shared in my Light Academia uh, video a while ago, I got this really cool edition of The Story Girl. I think that cover is just fabulous. This is my favorite Ella Montgomery book. So I love that and then I found Kilmany of the Orchard in the same kind of edition, although this cover isn't, it's not as good in my opinion. It's its seriously, it's not even just the lighting, it really is mostly white. There you go, kind of see it. And then in that same video, I found Henry James, The Turn of the Screw and other stories. I have another edition of The Turn of the Screw, but I wanna read the other stories. I have The Man Who Was Thursday. This is a nightmare apparently. Not what I thought it was when I picked it up, but it's G.K. Chesterton, so I wanna read it. And then I've got the Selected Journals of Ella Montgomery, Volume 1, which I do have Volume 1 already, and I haven't compared the two. I think they're slightly different because I think they were 
um, put together by different groups but I thought I would grab it and if it is very similar to the one that I have then maybe I'll just re-gift this give this to someone who might enjoy it oh yeah this was underneath one of my books I forgot I was going to show this um, I have a fascination with collecting postcards and you guys have been sending me a bunch just for fun and Megan one of my subscribers sent me this one I think it's so cool so thank you Megan for sending that now we'll go on to fantasy because I want to. Um, all of these I've shared already in various other videos. This is Ember in the Mist. This is book one in the series. This is a Christian fantasy series, I believe. And I really want to get started on this because it's been sitting on my like pile of books to share in a book haul. I haven't got to it yet, but I need to. Also, I need to add this picture to my mood board because I just got tape. So I'm going to do that. I love this picture and there was a sticker as well that I've put somewhere else that I need to put up in my mood board I think and then these other two I shared in my dark academia vlog I got six crimson cranes you guys have only heard good things about this book so I'm very excited I need to start on this really soon as well and then the light between worlds this one um, I had seen that Karina had read it and she said it was something like Narnia give her Narnia vibes and I, I don't even, haven't read anything else, don't care to, just want to read the book because that sounds good. Oh man. Last week I just read all week and this week I've barely read it all and I just could go for like another week of just straight reading. I have two mystery books I picked up. I've got Mrs. Polifax and the Whirling Dervish. I can't remember what number this was, maybe number eight. I'm collecting these books, apparently in like every single cover edition available. Um, but I'm collecting them whenever I find them and I'm slowly closing the gap on the ones that I own So that's good. Love this series about Mrs. Polifax who when she was 60 decided she wanted to work for the CIA Becomes a courier It's like you have to like just take some of the stuff Like some of it is like well would that really happen? No, it probably wouldn't but it's fun and she's great So I enjoy it and then I still want to start the series. This is the Mrs. Jeffries series it's their victorian murder mysteries this one is the ghost and mrs jeffries sometimes a housekeeper's job is murder yeah need to start this really soon as well oh my goodness i need to like create a reading retreat for myself i don't really know how one would do that but i would like to i only have one book in the middle grade category here and it is winterborn home from mayhem and mystery this one is book two in the series. So I've had book one for a while, but I was waiting for book two to be in paperback because that's what my book one is. And it kept only being in hardcover on Book Outlet. This is a fun series, you guys. Allie Carter, her books are, they're kind of like both her middle grade and her YA. They're darker than I expect. Like they, they touch on topics that I don't expect, but she does it in a really good way. I really enjoy them. So this is a duology and I read it a couple years ago and it was back in the day when we had little kids, little foster kids and so I really enjoyed it but I kind of don't remember anything so I would like to reread it. My daughter, I think she's reread it twice like in the last two months already, but the whole duology so she really enjoys it. She's already been trying to steal this and put this into her bedroom. Uh, I said she had to wait till I did a book haul so she can finally put it in her room now. So I shared a little bit of nonfiction with my classics but then I have some that are I guess some of these would have been classics too. Oh well. Some other nonfiction. So I have church history in plain language. I am reading this one. I am currently on page 90 and this is just the history of the church and it, it really is in plain language. This is so well done that even someone like me can read it and understand it. There's also quite a few different pictures about like different things um, depending on the chapter. I'm really really enjoying this. I talked a little bit about it in my Light Academia vlog. Um, highly recommend it. Then I also recently thrifted this. It's a charm of goldfinches and other wild gatherings. Quirky collective nouns of the animal kingdom. So it's just like the different words that describe a group of animals. So apparently it's called a memory of elephants. Are you serious? I would think it would be like a herd of elephants. Um, a charm of goldfinches, hence the title. A richness of martens. 
I think I'm gonna read this for nonfiction November because it's nonfiction, but it's super quick and easy to read. So I wanna read that. This one definitely would've been a classic. This is The Gathering Storm by Winston Churchill. So this is the Second World War. Um, his, I don't know, his book about it. Uh, I bought it for my husband. I might read it as well. I don't know, but I texted him at the thrift store, asked him if he wanted it. He said yes. So I got like the approval to buy it and I don't even have to read it. So that's kind of cool. So that will go into his office. And then I saw, actually my mom put this book on my hands. This is the book of North American Birds. And I recently saw this in a video by Randy Lynn Reed. I think her like fall lookbook. And I thought that was cool that we had the same book. I do love the illustrations in here. So every bird gets its own page. I haven't looked at it a ton. I used to make fun of my parents for having um, binoculars by their deck window, like looking into their backyard. And now I'm constantly looking at the birds, you guys. You'll notice from any of my videos, if you see like all the bird footage that I have in there, I migration has fascinated me. I need to learn more about goose migration. Um, oh yeah, and then there was like some free leaves in here that somebody was pressing. So I really like this book. Glad to grab that one. Plus when I went thrifting that time, my mom paid for my entire purchase, so that was fun. And my final stack here is, well, I'll call it kids books. It's, there's a variety here. So I got A Year at Maple Hill Farm. Um, so this is just a picture book about different things that go on at a farm in the different seasons or months, I guess. I have gotten this out from the library before, but it's been a while and this is like totally the kind of book that my daughter loves. Um, this is very like ox cart man-esque. Then I got, uh, most of these books were from, yeah, I think all my kids' books were from Book Outlet. I got Matilda Mad Libs for my 10 year old because he is obsessed with Roald Dahl. So I thought we would go through and do the Mad Lib stories together. I got this one, Poetry for Kids, Carl Sandburg. I love poetry and I love trying to push it on my children even though they kind of have not fallen in love with it like I have, but um, I don't actually know a whole lot of Carl Sandburg poetry, but I bought it anyway. And this one I'm excited about and it doesn't quite fit under my idea of Victorian children's fiction. I think it was like, published a couple years outside of the bounds. Um, it's The Rackety Packety House. This is by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So a couple of her books fall under the Victorian period, but the rest are a little too new. And I didn't know that she had written this. This is like a children's story um, about a dollhouse. I don't know much. And now I don't know if I want to read it now or if I want to wait until I study the time period that this goes in. I'm not sure. Okay, this one I bought for my little kids. This is a search and find. I This one is a wipe clean one. I just don't use the marker for that. But I noticed in the summer when we didn't have nursery or like a place for kids to go during church that a lot of search and find books don't show the pictures. So these ones are really nice because they show like, you're supposed to look for a bird cage, a bit of a glare. And then you can like find it on the page. Whereas a lot of them will just say the word but won't show you what the thing looks like. So I really like this round. I used to have one of these. And then when our foster kids left, I got rid of it and another back. So I got a different one. So these are just fun, um, like take on like road trips or to church, or sometimes they'll just pick it up and do it. Then I also got Wreck This Picture Book, How to Make a Book Come to Life by Carrie Smith. So we are currently working through, this is not a book by Carrie Smith and loving it, this part of our homeschool. And so her books get you to do different things. So this one has like an introduction. And then this one is like, what if you fold down some of the corners? Try rolling this page up. You could do some fancy folds to make this page stand a little. Fold it there. Um, so it's like a very interactive book. I thought that would be fun. This one says shake well before opening. <laughs> That's great. Okay, two last ones. I got a stage full of Shakespeare's stories, 12 tales from the bard retold for children. And I love the illustrations. I actually haven't even looked at this one. Um, I have another one, but I like the illustrations a little bit better. But it has the different plays here. So this one is Macbeth. 
And then we've got our cast of characters and then obviously the story is retold. So this is going along with my retellings. Once again, this could have been in a classic section, I guess. And then we are doing the Dickens one right now in our homeschool. I love these illustrations. So we are starting with Oliver Twist. Cast of characters, so cute. And we are just reading the story. And I get to stare at the pictures because they're so cute. So that is all for this book haul. I wanted to quickly share this because I do plan on going to my favorite used bookstore ASAP, bringing a ton of books that I unhauled in an unhaul video like a long time ago already, seeing if I can get some money for them slash get some new books. So I wanted to get these ones out of the way. Let me know if there's a book or two here that you guys think I'm going to really like that I should pick up first because it can always be hard to know like where to start when you have a pile of books that you want to read them all. So let me know and thanks for being here guys. <laughs>